one year since the new national minimum wage law went into effect, and lawmakers are claiming that it's been a success. The law forces businesses across the country to increase worker pay, but critics claim the new rule is... You the owner? Mr. Philip Carvel? Yes. We have a warrant for your arrest. There must be some mistake. For what? For violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Failure to pay minimum wage, Mr. Carvel. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Wait, in a court of law? Wait, did you do this? You have a right to an attorney. After everything I've done for you? Hey, let's go. Hey, let me go! Come on. Let me go! Careful, it is hot. Yeah. Anything good today? Just a ran in court, shop owner. Arrested for not paying his employee the new federally mandated minimum wage. He is hmm. looking at heavy fines, probation, and if he's not careful, a little jail time. Prison. For obeying the law of supply and demand. <laughs> We're taking this case, Holly. It's a divisive issue. Do we really want that kind of heat? <sighs> There's a DA gun on it. Sam Darby. Sam Darby. <laughs> you see that? See what? What am I looking at? I'm not shaking. Don't underestimate Sam. He's tough, but he also knows how to jab when you think he's going to cross. Yeah, yeah. Did I show you my hand already? You did. Let's take this case. <laughs> I have to admit, I am kind of intrigued. Mm-hmm. OK. Let's go talk to our prospective client. Love you. I can't thank you enough. No one wanted to represent me. Well, you'll learn quickly. Holly and I are passionate about what we do. I have to ask you, why didn't you pay your employee the minimum wage? I was trying to. It was, uh, it's complicated. Oh, don't worry. We'll get to all that. The trial of Philip Carvel begins today. The first individual charged under the new federal law. Now, if you've been following this story with us, you know that we have a long road. It'll be a long week, but we promise to bring you the very latest to this developing story. William and Holly. Lawyers for Liberty. Libertarian wingnuts who fight tyranny or, or something like that. You know, I should have known you two would be defending a wage dodger. That's a new low, William, even for you. Bring it, Sam. Careful, Will. I've got the law on my side. Oh, well, we've got... Economics. Economics. Good luck with that. Tommy, what is all this? Why'd you call the police? Mr. Carvel. You don't I... talk to my son. It didn't have to come to this. You better believe it did. You took advantage of him. That's not true. No, that's, that's yes. not true. Tell, William, tell your mom. Why don't you act like a lawyer control your client? All rise. Raise your right hand. Do each of you understand and agree that you will try the case now pending before this court and render a true verdict according only to the evidence presented to you and to the instructions of the court? I do. I do. The prosecution may begin its opening remarks. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, we all know the facts of this case. To defend it, decided that he was above the law and paid his employee a rate below the legal minimum wage. But this case, this case is about something bigger. Income inequality. What's on trial here is the gap between the rich and the poor. You've all heard of the 1%, but they don't all look like billionaire tycoons. Some look like shop owners. You must help us stop them. We must 
draw a line in the sand, and that line, ladies and gentlemen, goes right through that hardware store. Income inequality is the defining issue of our time. It's right here, right now. All of us are going to do something about it. We need to rethink this case. No. Yeah. Sam didn't jab, he crossed. Your Honor, I'd like to request a sidebar. My chambers. Now. You can't do this. This case is about minimum wage. This case is about economics. Exactly, Your Honor. It's that word, inequality. How can we get a fair trial when the case is framed this way? I realize it's a hot button topic, but I'm gonna allow Sam to open up this case. Your Honor. There are a thousand variables that go into the distribution of wealth in our society, from people's skill sets to their circumstances in life. You are asking us to defend the outcomes of the entire U.S. economy. You might as well find for the prosecution right now if you let this stand. Watch yourself, counselor. This is my court. My decision is final. The burden falls on you. William. William, are you trying to turn my headache into a migraine? Income inequality on trial. We need a new tactic. What do you think we're doing? I don't read economic papers for fun. Yes, you do. True. The jury won't be able to get past the emotion. We have all these conflicting feelings about fairness. We don't like it when one person earns too much more than the other, yet we also don't like it when people are rewarded without earning it. Everybody shouldn't get a trophy, yet no trophy should be too big. How do we unbag all this for the jury? Sam owns the emotion surrounding the issue, but we have the facts. We don't have to sugarcoat anything. Will, we have a good case. And you have a secret weapon. A secret weapon? Me. Will. Is the defense ready for their opening statement? We are, Your Honor. Good afternoon. You heard the prosecution's opening statement, how he wants you to view this case beyond the issue of minimum wage, how it's also about income inequality. Well, Sam's right. This is about income inequality. And what, if anything, we expect our government to do about it. What we intend to demonstrate is that the minimum wage is not, in fact, an effective tool in combating income inequality. Moreover, we will call into question the merit of income inequality as the benchmark for our understanding of progress in our society. Inequality isn't Good, but it isn't necessarily bad either. Uh, we will be using the latest data and econometric techniques. That's all, Your Honor. We're gonna need a new secret weapon. The prosecution may call its first witness. You voted for the national minimum wage, Senator, correct? I not only voted for it, I co-sponsored the bill. So it's your opinion that the government had to intervene? Without regulation, workers could be paid below a living wage. It would be slavery. Senator, you came up with a dollar amount for the new law? I did. So you put a value on the price of labor based on a hunch? We consulted many. Experts. Right. And what about the free market? Can I help you? Yeah. I was wondering, are you hiring? Could you explain that again? 
for those of us that don't have a PhD in economics. As we see with the graph, an open, well-functioning market is a necessary condition to lift people out of poverty, and that includes labor market prices. But as soon as you start to change the prices, you change the incentives. And what does an econometrician do? I apply mathematical and statistical techniques to analyze economic data. And according to your analysis of the data, what is happening with the income in this country? According to a decade of income reports, the gap between the wealthiest and the poorest is widening. And as an expert on that data, what do you think the solution is to this widening gap? Government intervention to address a clear market failure. I do need some help around here, but I can't. Sorry. Can't or you don't want to hire me? No, oh, it's this new wage law. So you can't help me out? I'm sorry. Really wish I could. You study data. I do. Can you tell me what the Gini index is? It's a statistical measure of income distribution for a country's residents. So a number that represents income inequality. Yes. And if I were to tell you that you could live in the bottom 10% of Venezuela, where crime is rampant, and people stand in line for hours just to buy food, or you could live in the bottom 10% of Singapore, where there's low unemployment and a nearly 90% home ownership rate, which country would you choose? Well, if I had to choose Singapore. And yet, Venezuela and Singapore have almost identical Gini indexes. So, Income inequality isn't an indicator of quality of life, of uh, economic progress for the poor, is it? Objection, relevance. Ms. Delbus, what are you getting at? I'm trying to show that income inequality doesn't mean that a country can't be prosperous. Sustained. Your Honor, these concepts are difficult to understand. I need every tool at my disposal. You will follow my rulings. Well, I can't call the entire United States economy to the stand and ask it how well it's functioning. That is enough, Counselor. Sustained. Move on. Tommy. I know you're not supposed to talk to me. Yeah. I'm sorry about this. When my mom found out what you were paying me, she went ballistic. What did you tell her about how uh, we can- Look, I have nothing against you. But you broke the law. And I gotta testify. We need to talk to you. We are losing this case. Between the judge reframing it as income inequality. And the jury unable to wrap their heads around hard data, we're in the weeds. You want me to take the stand? I feel like the victim here. You are the victim. I try to help out this neighborhood kid, but it's hard enough to keep a store like mine out of the red. If I could have paid him the minimum wage, I would have, but... You see, there's a story behind what you did. The jury needs to hear it. Your employee is going to take the stand, and when they hear the words coming out of his mouth, that'll be it for us. You need to take the stand. It'll be me up there. News cameras outside the courtroom. Protesters. I might lose my business over this. Can you tell the court how you came to pay your employee a rate below the minimum wage? Tommy came to me looking for a job. I'm just a small business. I didn't have the money to pay him, but I wanted to give him a shot. And then what happened? We uh, worked it out. What does that mean? I, I mean, we came to an agreement. Uh, what I could afford and what he would take. So two consenting parties entered into this business relationship? Your words, not mine, but yes. Let me say that again. Two consenting parties. You're from up the block, aren't you? I've seen you and your mother around the neighborhood. Look. I'm trustworthy. I, I want to work hard. 
Could use an extra hand around here. Hey, I got an idea. Your Honor, the state calls to the stand Thomas Purcell. Raise your right hand. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. In a shopping turn of events, the defendant in what's now being called the Income Inequality Trial took the stand today. This comes on the heels of the prosecution's star witness, the young employee claiming he was paid less than the mandated minimum wage, who is set to take the stand. Are you nervous, Tommy? A little bit. It's okay. You have nothing to worry about. Just tell the truth. Isn't it true you reported your employer to the authorities because you felt like you were being exploited? That while he broke the law, by paying you less than the legal minimum wage, he also helped facilitate the income inequality in this country. Objection, leading the witness. Sustained. Counselor, get to your point. My apologies, Your Honor. Can you tell the court about the events that led the defendant to offer you less than the legal minimum wage? I wanted a job, make a little money to help out my mom. No one would hire me. I've been in and out of trouble, and, well, you know the story. Tell us about how you came to work for the defendant. I asked him for the job, but he said he couldn't afford it. And that's when he offered you an amount lower than the legal minimum wage. It's okay, Thomas. Just. Tell the court what happened. I asked him if we could work it out. We? That's not what you said in your deposition. You said that he offered you an amount that was lower than the legal. That, that was, was my mom. When she found out what Mr. Carvel was paying me, she made me call the police. Your mom? She said I deserve the minimum wage. It was all her idea. Order! I will have quiet in my court. No further questions, Your Honor. As day five of the income inequality trial begins to wind down, the prosecution has begun its closing argument. that this has been a complicated case. Upon first blush, should have been a simple one. The defendant broke the law when he did not pay his employee what the law requires. But this is much more than that. It is about income inequality. And what's on trial here is the notion that government intervention is the best tool to eradicate this. I'm confident that you all will come back with a guilty verdict. <clears throat> Let's talk about fairness. Now I'm sure all of you hate those Wall Street bankers who influenced our government helped them rewrite laws that only benefited them. We all dislike inequality when it's a result of a rigged system because it's just not fair. But that's not what's at work in this case or the minimum wage. My client didn't rig the system for his personal gain. He took a risk. He took a risk and he offered the plaintiff an opportunity. An opportunity that both men agreed would make each other better off. Now that's 
the first step in the ladder to something more. Minimum wage? <laughs> Minimum wage removes the first rung of that ladder and expects somebody else to pay for it. Is that fair? And if we truly want to reduce inequality, you tell me. How does preventing a young man from getting his first steady job achieve that goal? That's not fair either. Do the right thing. I ask you now to retire to the jury room to begin deliberating. Now, while this case discussed income inequality, the defendant has been charged with breaking the law. So what does everyone think? He broke the law. End of discussion. If we let the state set a minimum wage, will they set a maximum wage? People who don't work hard don't deserve a minimum wage. Someone needs to protect workers from being exploited. Why can't they just be free to make up their own minds? This new minimum wage law is going to hurt people trying to get their first jobs. If you don't protect the working poor, though, the 1% is just going to keep taking and taking. Let's get one thing out of the way. The store owner broke the law. I think we can all agree on that. But this trial is about income inequality. Did any of you really know what that meant before this? Well, it's a really big issue and an important one. I think it warrants a serious discussion. take it anymore. When are they going to decide? My gut says we're good, but... But your gut has been wrong before. Tommy's testimony really helped us. And why is he pacing? I'm nervous. I'm not about losing. This case is more than just saving your reputation. It's more than us just winning. It's about preserving freedom. No, I have to admit it. You two ran a great defense. That's snark or sarcasm? Neither. Just tell me one thing. How'd you get the kid to flip? We didn't do anything. Tommy came to his senses. I wish I could believe you. Doesn't matter. You're going to lose. We're back in session. All rise. Foreman, has the jury reached a decision? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty. Justice was served today, and a strong message was sent regarding income inequality, an issue that has been defined by this generation. If we refocus our energies on building an economy that grows for everyone... I wish we could have done more. I know you don't like to lose. <laughs> so much more than that. I know. Tommy? Excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. The judge said it was okay to talk to you now that the trial's over. Yes. I just wanted you to know that you really moved me. You did? And I wasn't the only one. But you eventually found for the prosecution. Well, it all came down to the law, and your client clearly broke it, but... What? Well, let's just say that before the trial, I was 100% behind the new minimum wage law. And now? I'm starting to rethink what income inequality really means. Thank you. We got the one person. Depending on how you look at it, that could be considered a win. It's a first step. You ready for this fight? It's gonna get rough. Can you say that? What? What, what am I looking at? It's, you have to ask. You're right. <laughs> 